an amiable welcome to everyone this is your all in lockdown channel to enhance your understanding today's topic is about the history of anesthesia and 10 golden rules first we'll see about the history of anesthesia and about some great minds that made anesthesia what it is today 16th october is what we consider as world anesthesia day because of william t g morton william is considered as a founder of modern anesthesia What he did was he publicly demonstrated diethyl ether as a surgical anesthesia by administering it to Edward Gilbert Habert who had a vascular lesion on his neck. So by administering diethyl ether they were successfully able to remove that vascular lesion from Mr Habert's neck without any pain. Oliver Wendell Holmes was an American physician who coined the term anesthesia. When we listen about the term anesthesia what comes to our mind is the laws of sensation and the laws of consciousness so all these terms together is what he coined as anesthesia John Lunley and Ralph Waters coined the term balanced anesthesia Paracelsus 1540 discovered the analgesic property of diethyl ether on animals so William T G Morton he discovered diethyl ether's property on human but Paracelsus he administered it on animals Paracelsus was a German Swiss physician who established the role of chemistry in medicine Humphrey Davy in 1799 he experimented with nitrous oxide and was surprised at how it made him laugh so he named it laughing gas and wrote about its potential anesthetic property in relieving pain during surgery Horace Wells 1844 he was an american dentist William Morton was his apprentice Wells conducted a trial on himself by inhaling nitrous oxide and having John's Riggs extract a tooth. Dr. Morton in 1846 gave the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia. Before this in September 30, 1846, he performed a painless tooth extraction with ether as an anesthetic. And Morton he was an American dentist and physician. James Young Simpson 1847 was the first physician to use chloroform as a general anesthesia for childbirth he also described the first anesthetic death in 1848 the patient was a young girl named hanna greener who suffered sudden heart failure under chloroform john snow 1853 he was an english physician and a leader in the development of anesthesia and medical hygiene he was the first physician to study and calculate the dosage for the use of ether and chloroform as a surgical anesthetic car cola 1860 he was an ophthalmologist he introduced cocaine as a local anesthesia for eye surgery james leonard conning 1885 was an american neurologist he injected cocaine between the spinous process of a lower lumbar vertebrae he first experimented this on dogs and then in humans Today we have epidural and spinal anesthesia thanks to James Leonard Conning. Next we'll see about the 10 golden rules of anesthesia. So anesthesia it is abbreviated as assessment and preparation of patient in nilpa oral e equipments and drug check s suction working t tipping table h have a vein open e evaluate vitals yes somebody to help i intubation a Arbit check. So assess and prepare the patient adequately. So you have to check whether your patient is anemic or whether he or she is asthmatic, and if he has any condition like that, you have to correct that condition. The some patient may be severely dehydrated, so all these conditions have to be corrected before you are taking the patient to a surgery. So that is what you have to assess and prepare the patient, and you have to collect history. and you have to do, uh, do all the diagnostic tests like blood test um urine analysis everything has to be done and then second was nil per oral so nothing by mouth which means starvation you have to starve the patient so before any surgical procedure for example 6 hours you have to starve the patient uh, for any solid food 2 uh, hours you can starve the patient for any water so why you have to starve the patient is when you're taking the patient to a surgery there is a chance that he might vomit which means anything can come up into the airway so that is a risk because it will lead to aspiration pneumonia so you don't want that that is why you have to starve the patient check the equipments and drugs ready so drugs that are needed for emergency 
have to be labeled and loaded correctly and kept aside and you have to check all the uh, machines like anesthesia machine is it working properly equipments like in, uh, laryngoscopes or lma all these into all these instruments have to be checked correctly keep a suction ready suction is what when even if you aspirate something you can suction it out with a tube a small tube will be there so you can suction it out with the help of a suction catheter so always have a suction catheter ready the anesthetist him on a tipping table because he may still warm it even if the patient is supposed to be starved so the physician must be able to tip him head down if you can do this the chance of aspiration is very less sixth one have a vein open so this is very important during a surgical procedure you might need to take a, a blood analysis or you may need to have, give drugs through iv so always you must have a vein open always you must have an iv evaluate vitals so during operation anything can go wrong so always have an eye on the monitor so most vital monitors are heart rate blood pressure oxygen saturation respiration and temperature so whatever you are doing always have an eye on the monitor check whether the vitals are proper eighth somebody to help so you should always have somebody to help when the patient is coming to operation theater to a trolley you need someone to transport him on the operating table and vice versa when the operation is over you need someone to transport him on the trolley to take him to the icu whether whatever it is transportation or any normal help you should always have someone in the room to help ninth intubation so intubation can be done by laryngoscope so for that uh we need a laryngoscope which is properly working so intubation is when we can control the patient's airway and you can also prevent the aspiration of a patient tenth one keep an airway clear so airways are easily obstructed whether it can be any secretions or anything like that so you need to keep the airway of a patient clear you can do it by a guidal airway for example if you keep that it it is inserted via the mouth so what it does it it prevents your tongue from falling back so while you under anesthesia every muscles in your body are relax so even the tongue so what you need is guidal airway if you insert it it will prevent the tongue from falling back and blocking the airway so a guidal airway is essential to keep your airway ready so thank you uh, this is all it i hope i made it clear um, thank you for your time